this into place. And that's something I'd love to be a part of. Right. That was an extensive answer. And I think we're good with the time. Thank you very much, Anders, for the interview. Thank you so much. Hello again, Robert. We're in Helsinki in Tarko Health Hub. And before we continue to the local community, I have one special guest. So hello, Robert. And please tell the listeners a few things about yourself before we continue to your amazing career path. Hi, my name is Robert Brooks. A little background about me. Uh, I'm originally from the UK, from the northwest of England, uh, near Manchester. And I um, ended up in Finland because I went to study in university in London and met a Finnish girl there. And 23 years later, here I am in Finland, married with three children and lived in Finland now for a little over 20 years. Kind of classical story. Yeah. But as far as I know, you're not only a father, you're also, a, you call yourself a media consultant, is it? Yeah, di- digital media consultant or what so- does that social media mean? consultant. Well, I help people to use their digital channels more effectively, um, mainly with marketing. Um, so that means if you have social media channels, you have your own company everybody does yeah you have nowadays your, hopefully but if you if you have if you're a small company or an organization uh, or an institution and you have your own social media channels then mm-hmm. i help with all sorts of different aspects to do with with that with marketing or branding or, or whatever it is you want to do on those channels so all sorts of different projects people want to do on their channels then then i can help with that so do you just give consultations or is it possible to kind of hire you for a marketing campaign as a social media manager i guess these positions are usually called for, yeah, for a so project? social media manager yeah i mean i do that kind of work as well um i have ongoing projects with customers or sometimes i'm asked to do one one particular thing you know in the past i've done just a one-off project mm-hmm. i've done a few few of those where you know someone's asked me to just come in and just take care of all the social media marketing all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff for a particular project and you know it can run for, for a couple of days or a couple of weeks it just depends on on the project itself but those are interesting um a bit challenging at times because you're brought in and then you have to very quickly get up to speed with everything and figure out exactly what the project's about and what the people want and and do it very quickly and then make sure that it's good because you know if you're being brought in for a particular project then then you're kind of supposed to hit the ground running so to speak and and do it very quickly and efficiently but then that's also good that little bit of pressure sometimes is good for creativity all right and like jumping in a project and very quickly orienting yourself in what's going on within a company i think it's a very startup attitude have you ever worked in a startup yes i have i have worked in a startup um, about five years ago it was um based in espo just outside helsinki i was responsible for the social media i was essentially a social media manager in the company they were producing an app that um, enabled people to um, create online marketing campaigns via their app and uh, and also to, to buy buy products via the app as well and so i was i was trying to market that app to the world and, and make it more visible and um, it's challenging it's kind of you know you have to think and, and and react quickly and be creative i think that's nice and if someone wants a bit more adrenaline in his or her life, we have two startup accelerators kicking off this autumn in Tribe Tamper Community, oh. Redbrook Accelerator and Nordic Startup School. So if you're thinking about starting a business or, or you already have a pilot idea, you can check those two and right. that will work. Yeah. By the way, Robert, <laughs> here's the time for advice. Teach uh-huh. me how to do the social media. <laughs> That question is a bit too broad. What what aspects of social media do you want to, like, do, you want to do? Is there some classical mistake which is very regular for businesses nowadays? Yeah, yeah there is. Yeah. Yeah. Businesses often, sometimes, um, use social media as a kind of, as if it were a megaphone. That they're just shouting about the stuff they're doing all the time. And they just have like, we're doing this, we're doing that, look at us. You know, and it's, it's very one-way communication. <laughs> That's okay, but what... The point they're missing is the social aspect of that, that just sort of shouting about what you're doing is not very social activity. Um, it's much better to try and engage with your audience and include them in, in the conversation about what you're doing. 
not that I don't respect your experience, but in the good old times when I was freelancing as mm. well, freelancing for one actually social media project, I was told that starting a conversation with a question or a social media post is a kind of bad manners. Starting with a question. Starting is bad, with a starting social media post with a question is like super old fashioned and showing you being low bro or whatever. Okay. Has the times changed? Well, yeah, things change all the time, but but my experience of asking questions on on a social media channel is that there's a time and a place for it, and it can be incredibly effect effective. Oh. Just two days ago, I asked a question on my Twitter account, and there was you know a whole string of replies and responses and answers and conversations that that kind of oh. came up in in response to that. It was actually to do with um talk i'm going to be giving at a conference in in cork in ireland and i have quite a strong network of people there who, who i who i know i've got to know over social social media and i just asked them that you know I've, i've not been to cork in six years i'm coming back what should i do you know what's what's changed and what should i go and see and there's a whole long thread you can go to my twitter account and see this this very long thread of replies and a conversation and then the guy who's organizing the conference he picked up on this and he said that Anyone else who's coming to the conference, have a look at this thread. So marketing for his conference and branding for his conference and good for me and, and my talk at the conference. And so, you know, asking a question works. So probably we should also start asking our audience more questions in our social media. By the way, I'd like to remind our listeners that now Tribecast has its own Twitter. So if you have any comments or any kind of feedback or you actually want to ask me a question, you're more than welcome to do it. Yeah, I think it's important to remember that social media is about conversations. I mean, it's other things as well, but I always liken social media to, it's kind of like being in a pub, particularly in England. Maybe this is a very English thing, but you go into a pub in England and you can very, very easily and quickly get involved in a conversation with strangers, just people you bump into in the pub. And that's like social media, you know, there's people are talking about something on social media and you can just kind of involve yourself in that conversation. As long as you're kind of sensitive and polite, you don't just go wading in with your opinions but you can get involved in conversations and you never know where those conversations lead so you know i've had lots of all sorts of really kind of interesting and exciting projects and i mean this this cork this talk i'm doing in cork then the whole cork thing came about purely from twitter and it was over six and a half years ago you know we sort of we moved to cork for a few months my wife was invited to go to cork on twitter mm -hmm. we took the kids the whole family went over there and We had two months in Cork, and I've never looked back. That that Cork trip changed my life completely. The reason why I'm doing what I do today is because of that Cork trip, and it's all down to Twitter. Right. I guess this is a very good example how social media work. By the way, Robert, in your opinion, what's the most effective channel uh, nowadays? Which which do you prefer? For? Is it Twitter or? It depends. Depends on what business you're in. Depends on what your goals are. Um, different channels are effective in different ways. So there's no there's no kind of easy easy answer to that. I mean, Twitter can be incredibly effective for certain projects and certain audiences. Instagram can be equally as effective. Different projects, different audiences. They kind of serve different purposes. They kind of scratch different itches, if you know what I mean. So it's like it, there's not one not one that's better than any other. That they're different. All right. Uh, nowadays in Tribe Tamper social media, one of the most discussed topics is the coming stream festival in October. Okay. And let me invite you there. If you have a spot in your calendar, it's 3rd of October. We are having our annually startup practical festival called Stream. 3rd of October. 3rd of October. Okay. Exactly. I'll the tickets along. are already out. And I guess they also have a few spots for mentors and speakers as well. Ah, if you're interested. Yes, and and also for our listeners, I would like to remind that there will be a few pre and after events. So probably they will be interested in that as well. Please follow Stream Startup Festival on social media or and their newsletter and their web page. But I guess we're good for today with this conversation. Thank you very much for this interview, Robert. Thank you um, for asking me. And being an independent and owner of social media, here is the time to confess that this is our second talk. <laughs> <laughs> because I have already once did an unsuccessful interview. And sometimes it happens that the sound is not good, but interesting people always can come up again and talk together. Thank you very much for being with us today. And we're continuing further with this episode. Thank you very much. Yes. We're
we're still at Shift Business Festival. I kind of randomly decided that it's cool not to only talk with the people who the organizers want me to talk to, but to invite people whom I met and found interesting. Let me remind our listeners that the core idea behind Tribecast Tre is talking about startup ecosystem. However, some people are quite far away from this ecosystem, or maybe not. But they're not anyways a traditional business. However, they're my colleagues. And this is why... I think it's cool to spend some time with people who can teach me how to do some sound editing. Right. Anyways, thank you very much, guys, for having time for the interview. It was a long day for you as far as I could hear from your improvised studio. But hey, let's start from the very, very beginning. Please tell our listeners a few things about yourself. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Oliver Briney, or the Finnish pronunciation would be Oliver Briney. (laughs) <laughs> so, I am from Turku, and um, yeah, my, uh, my studies, my former studies had to do with theology and leadership. As a person, I have an endless curiosity for uh, stories, cultures, science, all different kind of stuff that I found interesting. I think curiosity is important, and I think learning is a lifestyle. How do you talk that? <laughs> yeah, my name is Andro Riihimäki. I, I'm an entrepreneur, father, husband, and uh, yeah, and we do together the podcast called Menestyksen Määritel. That's right. Yeah. So, what is your podcast about? It's a very interesting question. The name in itself, Menestyksen Määritelma, for all the English-speaking listeners, which I guess all of you are, but uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't understand Finnish, Menestyksen Määritelma means the definition of success. The word success in the Finnish culture and, and the cultural setting is usually a bit provocative even. We don't really have a culture where you openly talk about success that much. It's lifting up its head slowly, but um, we're getting better and better at it. And uh, what we saw is a void when it comes to the culture in Finland. We saw that, that not, a, not a lot of people are talking about uh, success. And uh, we wanted to basically start a podcast where we empower people to dream bigger, to talk about their Their dreams and uh, we just want to give a lot of practical different tools for people to build a foundation in their lives and then from that foundation start pursuing their dreams yeah and uh, mostly we do that by inviting other people to our podcast because it's through the uh, stories that we learn mm-hmm. and uh, throughout our uh, two year long learning and, and journey so far there have been so many like similar things in different people's like stories Mm -hmm. and their success stories definitely yeah so it's it's very interesting is it a good time to ask what success for you yeah we try not to define it in our podcast you are now Uh, in my podcast (laughs) it's a safe (laughs) space uh, yeah that's a good one uh we actually have a slogan that says how would you like it to look like Mm -hmm. so it's we believe it's something you define by yourself right what it is for you that's, yeah that's pretty much it and i don't really speak finnish but as far as i could hear from my recording corner your talks with guests are lively active and with some laughter involved yeah, yeah. we try to take some humor in it because it's we don't want to make it too like serious even though we discuss about serious matters mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah. yeah and that makes it a lot more pleasant for the uh, listener as well to listen yeah true Actually, that's a classical kind of question for people doing our job. What's your dream guest? Is there some person somewhere in the business world you would like to talk to but haven't had yet an opportunity? A very hard question. I think many, many names come to mind, yeah. obviously. Give me uh, a couple. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, well, someone like uh, Tim Cook from Apple would be really interesting to talk to. Um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk, oh yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah. And maybe we'd ask him whether he's um you know yeah an earthling him. earthling or an extraterrestrial <laughs> that would be a good question <laughs> and how do you come up with a good question um, we tried to do a little bit of back checking before mm-hmm. right and then we like oliver said we are focused on the story mm-hmm. and when the person starts to uh, share their story it's it's usually interesting so interesting that you you just come up with the questions like mm-hmm. on the fly basically usually have a few few questions that we perhaps thought about beforehand yeah but then from that it's just the conversation just flows mm. yeah so when it comes to a, a podcast basically our our principle or the premise from which 
we do the podcast is that you know we're naturally curious people, and we're yeah. very curious even off the record. You know, when the yeah. mic mics are turned off, we're very curious about uh, about people's stories and you know how they ended up where they ended up and what they what did they learn during the process. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, you know if you are interested in creating a podcast, I think you should. By nature, be a person who's interested in people's stories, and uh, and uh, we're so interested that we also want to give those stories out to people, and uh, for people to be inspired as well. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the base.